have faith in what you really can do. Believe that you can do it. For me, that is actually the most attractive thing in a live performance, that it's live. It's an art of the moment, that instant moment, because when music is gone, it's gone, but it remains somehow in your body and your soul. That's the transformative power of music. I would love for you to just take us back to the very beginning, when you fell in love with music, when you realized you had the special gift. Well, I was a musical child. Music has been always in my life. I started playing piano when I was little. When I was a pianist, like performing as a pianist on stage as a little kid, I had stage fright. So I already knew that I was not going to be a professional pianist or a professional performer. So that love for music or do the music as a job came really later. What is it like just walking to the podium? You've done it many times. Do you still get nervous? When I was pianist, I was nervous on the stage, but ever since I started conducting, I was never nervous on the podium. I trust our musicians and there is no really need to be nervous about that. Are there any thoughts that go to your head like some people oh, just yes. black out? That blackout moment when I do the interview. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous when I do interviews, <laughs> but not on the podium. <laughs> As a joke, but um, before I really enter the stage, what I think is, uh, I really hope, kind of pray that our musicians will enjoy the performance because they have to enjoy it in order for the audience to enjoy the performance. I never use this door, so <laughs> I always come from the very thin uh, stage door. Got yes, it. Yes. yes, but it's beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. I majored in composition at college, but I always loved interacting with instrumentalists or opera singers. I ended up becoming a rehearsal pianist in our college opera production, and the conducting professor kind of observed how I interact with the singers, how I interact with the musicians. And he actually asked me if I would consider studying conducting. And you, did you fall in love? Like what happened after that? Well, I was curious, but it surprised me actually, the question itself, because I never thought about that. At the beginning, it was really about navigating and exploring the music, not really necessarily conducting. And as I studied in Germany and as I participated in competitions and in other projects, I kind of realized that it could become my job. Can you tell us something about yourself that maybe not everyone knows or something fun? <laughs> like, can you do something real? Like, for, for example, me, like I can pop my shoulder out of my, like, out of the socket. Is there anything? <laughs> Like that, but you know something <laughs> unique about you that not a lot of people know yet. I don't know. I I think so many people s say to me that you laugh a lot. I think when people think like a conductor, I think they imagine like a person who is very serious and never laughs. <laughs> Maybe I'm uh, not a classical conductor <laughs> or that image of that conductor. What do you want the audience to take away from the performances? Everything and anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of people are worried about not being like experts in classical music or in opera, but everyone in the audience can be creative. Live performance is not like we're performing and they're listening, but we as a performer get to feel the energy of the audience member as well. The musicians who work with you, they describe you in a different way. They say you are very supportive, collegial, without being overbearing. Um, that's, <laughs> that's different. How do you make that happen? Well, if I was not overbearing, maybe 
because they were good. <laughs> there was no need to, for me to be overbearing. But I think being a conductor or being a music director is being a leader as well. And as a leader, I think it's very important to support all the professionals, whether it's orchestra musicians or singers. My job is, I think, to support them to do their work at their best. When I made my debut here at San Francisco Opera, that was May 2019. The first impression that I had with my orchestra was that they sing really from the heart. Mm. And that's very special. Every performance is of course different because we're different every single day. We have different day, we have different rhythm. So although we play the same music out of same score, the music is different, the, how we feel and how we approach it, it should be also different. Have you been able to enjoy the Bay Area at all? I know you're so busy, but... <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. I cannot say really yet that I know San Francisco, because I know my apartment and I know the Opera House, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'll get there. You are the only woman only Asian conductor to serve as a music director of a major American opera house. Have you even had a chance to step back and realize you are breaking barriers? After the performances, I get to meet a lot of audience members across the gender, across the generations. They come to me to say how inspired it was to see a young Asian woman on the podium. To hear those words, that inspires me again. So I think it's kind of synergy <laughs> effect. Sure. I'm thankful and grateful that people can see that, oh, if Eunsan can do it, I can do it as well. I have wonderful colleagues here at San Francisco Opera, so I think we're doing a good job yeah. here to make the next century sure. <laughs> well creative. We're creating a very good storytelling opera, so I'm very excited.